I want to talk to you today about Adam and Jesus Christ. The gift, the free gift, is not like the offense. That sounds like a weird scripture, and yet that's right out of Romans. It's in Romans chapter 5, verse 15. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Let me read that to you out of the um, New Living Translation. You know, a lot of times I'm, you know, reading scripture and, and um, you know, we can get into a habit of reading scripture. I want to read the word for the day and checking out my devotionals or things like that. And, and sometimes if we're not careful, it can become a routine. It can become, uh, I just need to get this done as if I'm earning brownie points and all that kind of stuff. But I have found that sometimes the Lord speaks the most profound things to me in one tiny scripture or part of a scripture. And if I'm not paying attention, I can miss it. But he gives me great uh, uh, niblets of stuff that I would miss had I not seen it. But let me read to you um, out of the New Living Translation, starting at verse 15 in, Mar in Romans chapter 5. But there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. And the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of that one man's sin. For Adam's sin led to condemnation, but God's free gift leads to our being made right with God even though we are guilty of many sins. For the sin of this one man, Adam, caused death to rule over many, but even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of righteousness. For all who receive it will live in triumph over sin and death through this one man, Jesus Christ. Is this an important statement? Oh my goodness, <clears throat> it's a very important statement. You see, I began to realize, because I'd heard so many sermons on sin, the church um, majors in teaching against sin, that I began to have the misnomer and believe that sin was greater than what Jesus Christ has done. Oh, don't get me wrong, I'm totally against sin. I'm not saying that we should just sin. But we need to put sin in its proper place. Jesus Christ is greater than sin. I know you may argue with me and you may say, oh no, we don't do that, we don't do that. Really? If you've listened to me at all, you've heard this example probably more than once, but I, it's a good example. If I had a white tablecloth and we were eating on it, we were eating grape juice, and so someone spilt that or even like spaghetti sauce or ketchup or something, mustard, and got it on this white tablecloth. That would be horrible. But I'm like, but I'm not concerned because I have bleach. I'm going to put it in the washing machine and I'm going to wash it up and it's going to come out good as new. All the stains are gone. It is white, just like it never happened. Doesn't that sound like Jesus Christ that we're justified just as if we'd never sinned and he washes us clean. His blood doesn't cover us like the, bloods of, the blood of bulls and goats in, that, um, in the Old Testament, but his sin, his, his blood washes us clean, washes our sin away and makes us right with God. And yet, if the next time you came to my house, we're eating on that that same tablecloth that's now cleaned by the bleach, and I begin to warn you, oh, don't spill grape juice on it. Oh, don't drop the ketchup. Let's put another napkin under you. You tend to be a little more messier than anyone else. Watch out, don't do it. Then what do you walk away with? What do you think is stronger, the bleach or the stains? Sad to say, the stains. 
And so when we are continually told about sin, again, sin is wrong. But you know what? I don't have to be a Christian to know that things are wrong. We have consciences that tells us that things are wrong. And we know it unless we, we um, um, what's the word? I can't think of the word. But we callous our conscience so we, that it doesn't bother us anymore. We know when we've done wrong. And so, but we preach against sin and we preach these things. But I want to tell you what. When I hold up the light, who is Jesus Christ, it shows off the darkness. I don't have to preach that. I don't have to examine the darkness to know the darkness is there and the light exposes it so it can be cleaned. The gift is greater than the offense. We have believed that what Adam did was wrong, and it was, but what Jesus came, he came back to redeem and get it back from what, what Adam had done. We have got to move from the Old Testament and the Old Covenant into the New Covenant. Now, Jesus lived even under the Old Testament in the Old Covenant when he was living. The New Covenant did not come into effect until, until Jesus died and was risen again. He died to shed his blood that would um, cover our sin or wash our sins away. But when he was raised from the dead was the proof that, G that God accepted his sacrifice. So now his, his sacrifice of blood covers, I'm sorry, washes away our sins so that we no longer have them. And um, I've told the example before, and I heard someone else say this, so I'm not going to take credit for it, about when in the Old Testament, when you had sinned, you brought a, a lamb or an offering, and you brought this lamb. But when you brought this lamb, the priest isn't looking at you. The priest is looking at the lamb because the lamb had to be perfect. He knows you're flawed. He knows that you have sinned. That's why you're bringing a lamb. He looks at the lamb to see if the lamb was perfect. Is there any defect in that lamb? Is there any problem with that lamb? And when he deems that that lamb is perfect and the sacrifice is made, then the blood is shed and sprinkled. And then, then the, the sacrifice of the lamb is given and then the fire comes in and consumes it and receives and accepts the sacrifice. So Jesus dying was for our sins, but him being raised from the dead was the proof and the testimony that God had received his sacrifice. It goes even more than that. In the Old Testament, when the sacrifices were given and laid, laid on the altar, then the fire of God would come down and consume the sacrifice, and the sacrifice is, go is gone. We even see in the story of Elijah with the prophets of Baal that they had poured the water on the wood and the water on the stones and all that kind of stuff. And the, the, um, the Word tells us that when the fire of God came down, that it consumed the wood, it consumed the stones, and even licked up the water that was around the sacrifices that had been poured on it to douse it. What does that say? It tells me that the judgment of God was greater than the sacrifice because it, it took care of the sacrifice. It obliterated it, incinerated it. So the judgment is greater. But when Jesus Christ was on the cross, when all the judgment was passed out, when God put all of our sin, all of our sickness and disease, all of our iniquities upon Jesus Christ, our Lamb, when it was over and the judgment was meted out, His body was left. That tells us that His sacrifice was greater than the judgment. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful to hear about our Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ, that his sacrifice was greater than the judgment that God was meeting out. And therefore, that satisfied the judgment of God against us. We are made righteous with God, not because of anything we've done or ever will do, but it's his righteousness. We are in Him, so we are covered by Him. Our sins have been washed clean, and we can come into the presence of God, made right with God. We're at peace with God, not because we're perfect, not because we'll never sin again, but because the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is covered, has covered us and His blood washed us clean. We are in Him. 
The word says in him we live and move and have our being in him. The word says that we are seated at the right hand of, of the Father. We are uh, seated in heavenly places. Why? Through Jesus Christ. Not because I've earned it. Not because of my righteousness, but because of the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Begin to look in the word. Ask the Lord and receive the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, of all that he has done, that he is greater than the offense. He is greater. It's not that what we've done, it's not what's, what's come against us and, and uh, our iniquities and uh, things that we've thought and things that we've done. Yes, those are wrong. But Jesus Christ has cleansed us. Mm. Jesus Christ has made us whole. Jesus Christ has made us accepted in the beloved. He has made us accepted in the beloved. Because I'm in him, I'm accepted. Because I'm in him, I have his righteousness. Because I'm in him, God accepts me. Praise God that the gift is greater than the offense. Let that work in your spirit. Meditate upon that and hear that the Lord is great, that Jesus Christ, the free gift that he gave, that God has given to us, is greater than the offense that Adam did. Jesus made it all right. Jesus put it back the way it is. He was the second Adam. The first Adam fell, but the second Adam didn't. The second Adam accomplished everything that had to be done, the sacrifice, the blood, the things that were required for holiness and righteousness, the things that were required to mete out the judgment, to satisfy the judgment of God. Jesus did that for you and for me. So meditate in your heart knowing that what Jesus has done, the great gift, is greater than the offense that Adam did or anything that you and I could ever do, that we receive Jesus Christ making us right and um, reconciling us to God. Do you understand how valuable, if we, it's priceless, that having peace with God is? Peace with God because of our Lord Jesus Christ, because the great gift is greater than the offense. I look at people in the world and they may be extremely wealthy, they may be in places of great influence, um, they may be president of the United States, they may be over Fortune 500 companies, whatever they're doing. They may be uh, you know, rock stars, they may be movie stars or whatever that, they may be even great ministers. But if we do not have peace with God, there is nothing that can take the place of that. And that is ours because of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and our elder brother. Receive the great gift that our Lord Jesus Christ has given to us and brought us and made us righteous with God Almighty. God bless you.